Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. I'm back from my vacation. I've got some awesome stuff for you back on camera. Um, <laughs> coming back from my vacation wasn't exactly the greatest thing because uh, some stuff is broken in my studio. We'll get into that at the end of this video because we're going to be covering a leak, a supposed leak of Nintendo's 2022 lineup, including some stuff on the Zelda 35th anniversary. Or do we even call it that? I think at this point it would just be called whatever's happening next in the Zelda series. Uh, but before I get into this stuff, uh, I gotta remind you, we are giving away a Switch OLED. Uh, I've got two pre-orders in, one for me and one for one of you guys out there. To enter, all you have to do is be subscribed to the channel. Uh, that's it, there's no special thing here. Just be subscribed. Uh, and if you happen to enjoy this video or you enjoy me as a person, why don't you drop a like and a comment on this video as well. Let me know what you hope Nintendo releases next year in 2022. <laughs> So I'm reading this off a of screen ramp, but this does come from a person on Twitter. And there's a reason behind me you see kind of sort of a, a, a tinfoil hat thing going on. Uh, I couldn't get my, my foil hat working myself. Plus, I don't want to mess up my sweet do. So, um, yeah, this is not something that I would say take to heart. It is something that I have talked about previously on this channel a, a week or so ago. But it was in a live stream format, and it really wasn't the greatest way to deliver this stuff. So we're deciding to talk about it here on a weekend, my first day back. From vacation and uh yeah we have some stuff here from supposed industry insider new marco maro now i don't know much about this guy um I, he's been leaking stuff for a little while he stopped leaking stuff now he came back and he's re-leaking stuff i don't really know there's a lot of stuff in here but i'm gonna read screen rant's version of this uh because they, they have a little bit of a summary here um and it says supposed leaks from an industry insider have appeared of apparently revealed nintendo's 2022 video game release lineup Nintendo has created some of the most iconic and successful series in gaming with Mario, The Legend of Zelda, Pokemon entries, and some of the biggest franchises may be coming next year. Uh, juggernaut of the video game industry, Nintendo recently revealed the Nintendo Switch OLED model, which again, we're giving one away. Just be subscribed to enter. Uh, when will we announce during a live stream, by the way, in early October? Um, an upgraded version of the portable console's base model. The new OLED model will feature a 7-inch OLED screen, allow for brighter colors and better image quality than the base Switch. The modern iteration of the Switch will also include other improvements like a wider and more durable stand. I'm talking about the kickstand there compared to the original model, a slimsier stand, and a wired LAN port. Um, 64 gigs of memory, all that jazz. Notable industry insider Marco Maro outlined Nintendo's alleged 2022 release schedule on Twitter. The lineup of titles was further corroborated. So again, this is the, the, this is where I, I'm glad we're reading Screen Rants because there's a second person corroborating these. these. So there's multiple people uh, behind this set of particular rumors here. Uh, so yeah, Marco Maro might have been the original uh, person, but again, corroborated by Cameron Hawkins, who is a journalist and gaming personality. So this is a supposed gaming journalist. Cameron Hawkins is, is backing this stuff right now. Um, so... Hey, ends up not being true. These are the kind of people you can kind of Marco Maro, Cameron Hawkins. See ya. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, the schedule of titles is quite extensive, but it includes a new 2D Donkey Kong title, Pikmin 4. Ooh, Pikmin 4, baby. Um, a 3D Kirby adventure with RPG elements. Ooh, yay. A Metroid Prime collection, additional HD remakes, etc., etc., etc. So here are the tweets. So Marco uh, Maro says, you know, uh, DK... Uh, new 2D, uh, new adventure is uh, one of the big hits for next year. Unclear whether this is planned for holiday season some time ago, but it'll make sense to use as a closing or opening for fiscal year. Uh, so Splatoon 3 should come early next summer, which, again, I expect Splatoon 3 to be early next summer. Uh, next up is Rhythm Paradise slash Heaven gets a green light for a new entry for Switch months ago, but you shouldn't expect it until 2023. Pikmin 4 was a game with many years of work behind it, and one unofficial, meaning not talked about publicly, restart around 2016 or 2017, similar to Metroid Prime 4. Finally, the game is very close to being finished. Yes, please. It also feel like it makes sense to have Pikmin 4 come now, and Pikmin 3 Deluxe is officially the best-selling in the entire franchise. In fact, Pikmin's more popular now than it's ever been, so great time to get 4 out. Kirby's next big adventure is something to be expected in 2022. The game was designed as a 3D adventure with RPG elements. Now, we do know factually a new Kirby game is in the works. Uh, it's been teased by the people behind Kirby for over a year. Uh, things like how it's going to be the biggest, most ambitious Kirby game they've ever done. 
something like a 3D adventure Kirby game with RPG elements would be pretty ambitious. So we'll have to wait and see if that's true. Um, next up, Marco Maro says Metroid Prime Collection should be ready for the first half of 2022, even if it's uh, been finished since ages ago. I heard they include more stuff since then, so it's not 100% Metro Prime Trilogy Wii. So it's not like taking tr Prime Trilogy Wii and just throwing that in HD. Uh, I guess they added you know so, some bits of new content or, or some new changes to the games. Um, and you're going to get our first look at Metro Prime 4 later on. The game is at 65% of its development cycle. I So... This is like the one red flag, at least from Marco Maro. Now, this is being backed by an actual game journalist, so that's that's one thing to take into consideration. But I never really liked this 65% thing. It's like, how do you really, how do you put a percentage on development? Like, I guess you could say, you know, things are halfway done, 50%. I, I don't know. I 65% just feels like a random figure just pulled out of thin air. Um, obviously, I think the game's more than 50% done, at least I hope so. If it's not, then we're not going to see this game this generation, but we'll see. Uh, and this last bit here uh, deals with Zelda. Oh, wait, sorry. There's Detective Pikachu, too, as well. I will make a trailer debut early next year um, alongside uh, one that will be ported to Switch. Gen 9, unlikely to happen in 2022 since there's a Pokemon Let's Go sequel planned for next year. So, man, starting year with Legends, ending with a sequel to Let's Go? All right. I mean, that's, that's some pretty ambitious stuff. Pokemon Pinball is going to come back uh, eventually, too, they said. Uh, but here's some Zelda stuff. So this is... You, you could argue 35th anniversary. I think at this point you would just argue that this is just the, the, the roadmap for Zelda games. Because uh, we know, obviously, Skyward Sword HD just came out uh, last month. Uh, you can really it's August already. Holy crap. Um, so, as I said before, uh, n even though Nintendo said no more Zelda for the anniversary, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD have been done for a while. So, those should come sooner than later. I haven't heard anything about Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask HD, but there is something about the N64 version that might be we'll know later this year. Uh, I would assume that's like maybe if they add the N64 to Nintendo Switch Online, maybe they release them on their own. It's like a standalone combo pack in HD. I, I just don't like, you know, kind of like what they did with Super Mario 3D All-Stars. I just don't see that. And Nintendo said we're not doing anything else this year. So them being added as part of like adding the N64 to Nintendo Switch Online, you could argue that that's not because of the anniversary, right? That would have happened anyways. You're obviously going to launch the N64 Online service with these two games. It would it, be stupid not to uh, with, with Ocarina of Time and Drawers Mask. But hey, what do I know? I don't work at Nintendo. So uh, next up, uh, they said, uh, as I said a year ago, there is there is a remake for Oracle of Ages and Seasons in the works um, targeting late 2022 or early 2023. I would assume 2023. Uh, there were plans to include a third game that was originally uh, for the Game Boy Color. Uh, what is clear, at least since the start, is that there will be separate releases. So Oracle of Age and Oracle of Seasons will each be like their own game that you can buy. It won't be packaged together. Um, I mean, there might be a packaged together version, but it'll be double the cost of, a, of just one game. And whether or not there'll be a third game, I, I guess is up in the air. Nintendo, I guess, was considering completing the potential third game that Capcom was going to make. Remember, um, Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, and that mystery third game. Um, it's not really a mystery, even though the title of it, it's out there on the internet if, you, if you'd if you like to look for it. Um, so yeah, that, that's really cool. I honestly think that all of this stuff is interesting. And I guess what really made me want to talk about it is when I was going through this article, um, you know, and it mentioned that, hey, an, an actual game journalist is backing this lineup. That's, that's a whole different story than just a random person on Twitter. We have an actual person's name and the reputation on the line um, going, you know, backing all this stuff up. So I, I find this to be uh, very, very interesting stuff. It obviously creates a, an interesting situation at Nintendo as well and as a Nintendo fan. And that's because when we look to the future of Nintendo, we're always hoping to see uh, stuff we want to see. And I feel like there's a lot of things in there I want to see anyways. Uh, all those Zelda games are cool. Um, obviously the uh, Pikmin 4 is something I, I, I just really hope that Pikmin 4 thing is true. A lot of this stuff seems fairly safe. Um, a new Kirby game, although going on a limb and calling it a 3D adventure game with like RPG elements, like that thing makes me think of Breath of the Wild or something. Like that's, they didn't say open world, but it, it's just, it, it sounds extremely ambitious. And for, you know, I think Nintendo's sake, I like when they're ambitious. I feel like they're being ambitious with Splatoon 3. I would love to see them be ambitious with Kirby and other IPs. So this, to me, is all good news in my book. I'm, I'm super excited as a Nintendo fan, and I hope a lot of this is true. Again, tinfoil hat the hell out of it. Um, aluminum foil, whatever whatever kind of foil you want to put on your head. Um, I'm not saying that this stuff's going to happen. Um, it's just, 
hey, it's out there. It's being talked about. Uh, we do have an industry uh, person who's backing it. Um, so we'll have to see what happens there. Now, I did mention that something happened when I got back from my vacation. We spent a week in Vegas. I was It was pretty insane. Um, but when I got home, ah, sad days, this happened. Well, what you're seeing is a partial shot of my 49-inch QLED ultra-wide monitor. I don't know what happened. I think a lightning strike. I'm not sure. The thing wasn't even turned on. Everything was turned off when I left. It wasn't a power strip. I don't know what happened. All I know is I came home, and this is now the screen. It doesn't work. I can't get to the settings menu. I can't do anything. I've tried multiple cables, different plugging into different slots on the back. It doesn't matter. Uh, the screen looks like it's toast. Good news is that uh, Samsung is attempting to get it covered under the warranty, but there's a potential the repair guy is going to show up, take a look at it, and go, hey, I can fix this right now, but it's going to cost you $800. That sucks. It's a thousand dollar monitor. It is what it is. The, the the good news though is that that appears to be the only thing that is fried. I had a couple reboot issues with my computer, but everything seems to be testing out and working just fine. Obviously, I edited this video, recorded it, all this. The camera equipment, which man, I'm so lucky. I forgot to turn off this camera. This is uh, my Lumix G9 uh, that I use. I, I forgot to turn it off. If there was a lightning strike, I don't know why the camera didn't fry because it's directly plugged in, but hey, look, uh, the camera still works. Uh, my laptop was with me, so there was no chance anything was gonna happen to this. Uh, this is working, my other computer's working, so the only thing that appears to be fried right now is probably the most expensive thing in my office that's not my camera. The camera, I mean, this is this is pricey too, but this wasn't with, is like, in terms of, I mean, the whole, my whole PC could have fried, and that would have sucked, but I doubt that. Usually when things die in a PC, it's individual components, not the whole thing. Uh, but that monitor dying, that really sucks. Um, none of my other TVs and monitors are color accurate, not even this one. So for color accurate work and editing, um, that was it for me. That was the monitor I had. But you know what? It could be worse. I could have lost my whole house. It could have started on fire. Um, could have lost a lot of stuff that's way more valuable than just a silly monitor. Hopefully, uh, Samsung will, 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 will do me good here with the warranty and say they'll cover it. I hope so. I won't know until the repair technicians here at the end of the week. Um, but yeah, whatever. We had good, good Nintendo stuff today. Um, so yeah, don't feel like you guys need to donate or any of that crap to, to give me a new monitor. Um, it is what it is. If the monitor ends up being toast, it ends up being toast. That's the way technology goes. Um, all I can do is move on. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video, which tomorrow. Although I might, I might do a live stream today, but we'll, we'll definitely have a new video video coming tomorrow. Thank you.